So. Uh, good morning, class. Uh, start this morning on uh, still studying in Ephesians, going to chapter five this morning. And uh, but before we get started, I want to open up the prayer, remembering all your lost loved ones, those that are sick and uh, afflicted with the pain of all, and those with lost loved ones, and our country, our leaders. You know, there's so much in need of the Lord's guidance, and we have a lot to pray about. And we have a lot to be thankful for. So as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, asking if you uh, remember all these, and we ask the Lord to be in our midst this morning and uh, have his way in our service. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come dear God to the throne of grace, we want to thank you for this day that you've given us and the blessing. And Lord, we want to pray for all the lost loved ones, those that are sick and those that want it, that are with the virus, the other ones that come off, and just and uh, dear Lord, we just ask that you be with our country and our leadership, dear Lord, that are in need of your direction, your guidance, and pray that the Lord, your Spirit, of, your Holy Spirit, will be in our midst this morning, guide us in our thoughts and in our studies and reading your Holy Word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> okay, as we come this morning, starting out in uh, Ephesians 5, chapter 1. Uh, Apostle Paul writing to the church of Ephesus and uh, going over some things here that you know that really come down that uh, you know he was so pleased with them you know we go back over here into uh, in chapter 1 and uh, uh, where he said that he was kind of he was pleased with what he saw and, and them but he's still giving the warnings. He's still giving things. What to be looked out for. What not to do. And things that we should do. And that's the things that we need to To be reminded of these things constantly. Because it's so easy to let them slip. So if we start out here in verse 1. He says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. You know, we talk about being a follower. as a person who follows another's belief or teaching. A disciple. And that's what who we are. We're disciples of the Lord. By a servant or by an attendant. By being in a church. In a church, hearing God's word, uh, doing service for the Lord. You know, this is all being followers of the Lord. You know, and, and that's who we are. When we get saved, we become children of God. And uh, as being our Heavenly Father, He wishes to bless us with blessings. But he wants us to not be disobedient to his commands and his commandments and things we know we should be doing. He wants us to be and talk to him every day, pray to him, and that your concerns and your needs and stuff. Even though he knows he wants the communication that you will give him day to day. And uh, number two says, uh, says, and walk in love. Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Thank you. Jesus the sacrifice. He sacrificed himself. Now we talk about a sacrifice, we're saying is an offering of the life of a person or an animal or an object homage to a deity, which we're, we're saying he is a state of being like God or a divine nature. Uh, God, Jesus gave himself a sacrifice to his heavenly Father. And two, he says, and giving up, destroying of one thing for the sake of another in a higher value. And just think, Jesus thought himself to be, uh, he came down as a servant and he gave himself for the souls of all men, you know, and to serve the will of God, the Heavenly Father. You know, in Galatians 1, 3 or 4, Paul, Paul wrote to Galatians, and he says, Grace be unto you in peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God our Father. So it was God's will that we to be delivered out of this uh, sin world and uh, the corruption that's here. 
deliver those, those that would answer the calling that he would give them, you know, to come to the Lord. And he would deliver us out by saving, being saved and being renewed, washed in the blood of the Lord. The handwriting against us being wiped away and our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. These are, these are blessings. These are the grace of God that gives us so much blood. And that's why when we look at each other, knowing that none of us is any better than any of us is, and in the eyes of the Lord, that, uh, you know, there's no big eye and little, little you. We're all the same, you know. So to love each other and help hold each other up and so we can make it to the end to where we can be with the Lord, you know. Number three says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetous, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Yeah, when you come to be saved, you're a saint of God. You've been, you've received salvation. And that's the thing we've got to remember who we are. Point number four says, neither filthiness or foolish talking nor gesturing, which is not convenient, but rather giving thanks. Yeah, not to be doing any of this stuff that the old man did. We're the new men. We've been, you know, like I say, we've been born again, baptized, but the Lord Jesus Christ, we're the new man. The Spirit of God dwelling in us. And uh, that uh, we should give thanks to Jesus always, every day, for what he had done for us and cleansed us, you know. And uh, number five says, for this you know, that no longer or unclean person or covetous man who is an adulterer, adulterer, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. None of this is ever going to get up there. It's going to stay down here because this is, is things that are named among the children of disobedience and the wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. You know, as Christ is saved, from, saved us from our sins, baptized, the old man went down, and the new man up, there should be no more of these things in your mind or in your life, because you've been cleansed away, and so the Holy Spirit dwells in you, and I'm sure that uh, if you're doing this, the Spirit of God is having a short time being inside of you, yeah, you're going to get the chastisement of God upon you really quick, and I'm sure. Okay, number six, is let no man deceive you it with vain words, for because of those things, these things, cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Just like I said, you know, the disobedience is failure to obey command. In other words, you become insubordinate. You will be an insubordinate child. And of course, you know from experiences with your earthly father that if you're an insubordinate child, that uh, more than likely, you're going to catch the wrath of your father when he uh, makes that, that uh, corrects you. But, you know, that's the thing that uh, I think most all of us at one time or another probably experienced. I know I did when I was old, but uh, I didn't want to be in the wrath of my father very often, so I tried to, I straightened up pretty quick. So that's the thing we always need to remember. And just think, God the Father knows how to do it even better than our earthly father did. It says, uh, number seven says, Be not ye therefore partakers with him. Yeah. Shun away, pull yourself aside separate, no longer dealing. You know, that's the thing, you know. Number eight says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Yeah. You're heart, your soul, your mind has been enlightened to who the Lord Jesus is and why he came here and you're children of the light because you've been saved. All the sin debt before has been working. You know, and that's the thing. The devil tries so hard while he's got you to beat you down having you sin every day. But you know, Jesus came into this world to destroy the works of the devil. And you just think, once you get
get saved, and he wipes your sin debt clean, writing against you. All that work that Satan did, getting you to sin through all these years up to that point in your salvation, Jesus wipes it clean. And his work is being for naught. That's the thing that you want to remember. That the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of me and you and I, is doing this for us. And we should be so thankful that we should shun away and be as Christ-like as we possibly can. And number eight says, For ye were sometimes... Oh, God, right there. Number nine says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You know, that number 10 says what is acceptable to the Lord is what is pleasing to God. Acceptable. We, want, we should be doing what pleases God because just think of what God has done for us. If that doesn't please you, then you're a very hard person to please, I'll tell you. <clears throat> but you know, Apostle Paul wrote <clears throat> in Romans 12, 2, he said this, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's what takes place, isn't it? Our mind is renewed in a different that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God that we can live in with to the will of God? <clears throat> God's will is for us to have and to be happy and to be blessed, but it's also that we be <coughs> obedient children, trusting Him. Pray to him every day and uh, let him guide, let him help us on this way. That's what he wants us to do, is to be an obedient child. Okay, number 11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. 12, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. <laughs> well, you know, what they done in secret, they just keep the secret away from mankind, from you and I. So, because they don't really have a secret. Because anything that they did, said, or thought, God knows, right? The people who do wrong think that they have a secret, but God knows all things that are done. In Leviticus, 19, 17, and 18 says, Thou shalt not hate thy neighbor in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. God knows what you do, you grudge, or whatever you take, you steal, your thoughts, or what you would say, I'd like to do to this one right here, what he does, or whatever. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. He will judge that person at the end of his time and, and make things right. You know, so <clears throat> that's why it's so important that in chapter 4 that we read that uh, don't let the, the wrath your wrath go down you know at the end of the day it's darkness it's because you should pray for forgiveness of your sins every day because you don't have the promise of the tomorrow you don't know what's going to happen through the night there's a lot of people that lay down at night that never got back up the next morning and that's something we need to remind especially when you get about our age, we so many uh, people having heart attacks and strokes and <clears throat> different things, you know, that uh, we don't know when our day is coming. But when it does come, we need to 
be ready. Okay. And 13 says, But in all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Now manifest is discovered or discovered. No secrets. That's something you want to remember. Anything that's manifested is brought out. Okay? And 14 says, Wherefore he said, Awake, thou that sleepest, <coughs> and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You know what? That's uh, we talk about the awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. You know, we know as we read back in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that Jesus called a young lady that had passed away, called her back, and then there was the uh, widow that she had her only son, and she was going to live her life with him, but Jesus met him at the funeral procession and saw her, uh, you know, uh, crying and all, and uh, found out what the deal was. So he walks over to there and gives that, that guy, young man, his life back and, and presents him to his mother. And then there was Lazarus that had been in the grave for four days there. And he called Lazarus' uh, soul back to the body and brought him out. So we know that Jesus was able to pull, to have authority to speak to those that were dead and even to bring them back into this world. Now, to uh, further emphasize, you know, in Romans 6, 4 through 8, says, uh, Paul writes, says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that that our old man is crucified with him. In other words, we've been saved, but when we die, it goes out, the, the, the soul, the uh, flesh body decays, goes back to where it came, and it says, uh, And we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Because when we resurrect out of that, we're going to have a new body, right? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him and the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Because sin has no more effect on you after you die in your soul. There's no more against you. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. That's it. <coughs> when the Lord calls us back, calls us from the grave, that we are going to have a new glorified body. That's him, because we're going to meet him in the air. And, you know, we're going to rise and rectify this. As he ascended up, that's what's going to happen to us. We're going to ascend and meet him up there in the air. And, <coughs> you know, and uh, Apostle Paul he writes to him, Thessalonians, he tells us this, that four, chapter 4, 16 and 17, he said, For the Lord himself shall descend from the heavens with the shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air, and so ever be with him for forever. Now there, <coughs> so we're going to be transform and be like him when we resurrect. That is our belief and <clears throat> that's the reason that we've been saved and that we are to be uh, a resident in heaven. That he wrote our name, Lamb, our name in the Lamb's Book of Life so we would have a place there, right? Okay. <clears throat> in verse 15, Says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. <coughs> circumspectly, carefully attentive to.
to all circumstances. In other words, being cautious. See, we should be cautious of how we walk, right? And not as fools, but as more as a wise person. 16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. Redeeming to uh, recover and to make amends for, you know. In Colossians 4, 5 and 6, it says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. That's right. Answer in a Christian manner. In a way that, uh, you know, uh, don't be high-minded. And don't be thinking that you know it all. You know, because we don't know it all. But uh, let them know that there's a, the Holy Spirit of God who dwells within you. And that you are a saved, a child of God. Keeping your mind on the Lord. So that the devil does not have a chance to break in through in your thoughts and your feelings. You know, that's the thing that we need to always remember. <clears throat> you know, and in verse 10 up there it says, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. In other words, the will of God. Uh, keep in mind what would be the will of God for you to do and how to ask, how to ask. and not letting Satan break through you astray or get you to say something that other people might think, well, if this is the way Christian people act or talk, I don't want to go part of it. You know, that's what we don't want to do, is bring anything against, uh, you know, the Word of God, our, our Christian, that uh, we should have. We should always be on our guard, always, and let the Spirit of God guide. So that's the end of our class today. Thank you for the opportunity for you to read the word and study and uh, be with us. And uh, <clears throat> so let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word and the study. And dear Lord, we just want to ask that you be with us, guide us in our thoughts and our direction, our walk in life, and that we can espouse your presence in our lives always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.